Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I have another update for the Spooky here. This is my previous Break Boss, Break Boss? Break Adapter, I should say, that if you saw my last video, I was trying to figure out a solution to put a newer style disc brake on this bike. So I 3D printed a part that is actually still working. Shockingly, it's still working. This part is uh, made out of PETG. It's printed with a 30% infill, which is ridiculous and it works and it's held up but it flexes a bit and it looks a little sketchy and there's a couple things I wanted to change on it so I've made a new version this is also PETG this is printed completely solid though so there's no there's no um, infill pattern it's just a solid infill it's a completely solid piece so it's quite a bit heavier but it's also going to be way stronger um, one of the issues I was having is that this would flex a little bit when I hit the brakes it would flex forward and it would kind of bow inward a little bit toward the toward the wheel just a little bit I mean a few millimeters but didn't look great so I think the solid version is going to alleviate a lot of that I also moved this angle here out just a few millimeters by maybe five millimeters to uh, help distribute some of that load and I also made these little you can see this little bolt mount here and then one here which has a now a bump out this one doesn't have um, that is going to accommodate this cross brace which goes across here like this on the outside of the frame so that'll kind of go from about here to here and what that's going to do is any load that's trying to go inward it should distribute that onto this piece a little bit and kind of um, keep it from flexing as much so again I plan on making an aluminum version of this eventually but I, I'm kind of convinced that I could make a 3d printable one that would hold up uh, I'll probably kill myself trying to find out, but I think it'll work. So let's get the sucker installed and then uh, take a look at it. All right, so here's the previous design, and here is the new design. And you can see it's almost identical. And you can see I've got the bump out here, which this one doesn't have, and the little section for the cross brace, which is going to go from here to there. It's going to basically ride right up against this piece of metal here to help keep this from flexing, because if you look here, if I push it, see how it's got a little flex? and I, I want to eliminate that as much as possible. Um, I also shortened this top piece just a little bit so eventually I can make this so that it slides back or forth, uh, back and forth, back or forth, I don't know, with the, the wheel so I can change the wheelbase because right now this version I can't really move. This one is kind of the same setup but uh, a little further along. There will be another version after this so this is just gonna be the update. All right, so here it is all installed. Um, I stuck a couple little pieces here. This back bolt uh, just wasn't threading as well. I feel like the hole was about a half millimeter larger than it was previously. Like this one worked fine and these two holes should be the same size. But this one, uh, when I went to thread it in, it just was loose, like it was barely taking grip. So I might have to do a little mod to that one for just this version. Um, the brace seems to help. It does still flex this way just a tiniest little bit. Again, I think it's just because it's plastic. It doesn't do it nearly as bad as the first version, but uh, a little bit. So probably just one more iteration to go between this and an aluminum version if I end up not perfecting a 3D printable one. Okay, so that is it. It's installed and um, I'll give it a little more testing and see how it goes. Uh, next project is to make a proper chain guide. Now, I don't think the chain guide is going to be nearly as uh, fickle or uh, there's not much to worry about with it. It just needs to make sure the chain doesn't slip off. Whereas this is um, it has to have a lot of functionality and it has to bear a lot of load. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with the way this is working. However, I think aluminum is still going to be the best option in the long run. Maybe a carbon filled 3D print. I don't know. Getting ahead of myself. Quick look at this. This is another design that I attempted and it is insanely close to working so so close and this would be my favorite design where if I could fit it right here where the original brake was uh, simply because when the wheel goes in it has to go in horizontally from the back as opposed to vertically from the bottom so when I have the brake mount up here 
um, it, sliding the wheel in this way, the actual rotor, the top of the rotor does not clear the notch in the brake caliper. So I have to actually loosen the brake caliper up when it's up, mounted up here. I have to loosen it up, lift it up, slide the wheel in, put the brake caliper back down, and then um, re, uh, reset it, which isn't too hard to do, but it's just a, an extra step that I could avoid if I could get the brake mounted here. But here we have literally, see how the, the, the rotor wants to hit the, the caliper and that is the most that I can adjust it because this little metal piece just hits the frame and that is so, so unfortunate. Um, I'm gonna think about this a little bit and see if there's a way that I could bring this down just a hair further. I don't think I can because I think that this bolt is a, about as low as I'm gonna be able to place it under here. If I can rotate it maybe like a degree or two forward, I might, might, might be able to make this fit. And again, this would be better, it'd be less metal in the final product, which means lighter. It also puts the forces of the brakes closer to the frame, because when it's on that big thing up here, which I like the way it looks mounted up here, but it a, makes a, a giant lever, which uh, if you know about leverage, you know, the longer the lever, the more force you're putting against the other parts. So um, if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do, it's fine. But uh, anyway, this was an experiment. In case anybody was wondering, like, why don't you put it here? This is... This is the closest that I can get it so far. I'm going to give it some thought and see if there's any other options, but I think that is about it. All right, guys, sorry for this insanely crap lighting, but I just finished a night ride. Um, I have officially put over 40 miles onto this 3D printed brake mount, doing lots and lots of wheelies, tons of stopping and it has held up. It does flex just a tiny bit more than I like, but it's not bad, and the fact that it's still holding up is kind of amazing to me. I'm betting that maybe one of the um, the carbon-filled uh, printable filaments that are really, really strong might even be better. Again, I still want to get this machine out of aluminum, but I'm super impressed. So when people are like, oh, 3D print, is so that going to be strong enough for your costume part? This is a is a really, really good test to show the, how strong a 3D print can be. Um, yeah, lots and lots of abuse on this now. 40 miles, stops, wheelies, jumps, all kinds of stuff, and it is okay. But anyway, thanks guys for stopping by, and I will see you kids soon.